Welcome to my lecture online. Another stumbling block in calculus is the phrase taking the derivative with respect to some variable. So what does that mean when we take the derivative with respect to some variable? Well, let's take a function. Let's say that the function x is a function of the variable t and is equal to t squared plus at plus 10. And so now we're going to take the derivative of that function with respect to t. What does that mean? Well, we take the derivative of the function x with respect to t, which is equal to, and now this is something we normally don't write because we use that shortcut method, but this is essentially what's happening. So you take the exponent and multiply the constant in front, which is a 1, so it's 1 times 2 gives us 2 times t, and now you subtract 1 from the exponent, so 2 minus 1 becomes exponent 1. And then, using the chain rule, we have to take the derivative of the variable t with respect to t, which is the derivative of t with respect to t. Plus, here we have the exponent 1, 1 times 8 is 8, t to, to the exponent minus 1, so 1 minus 1 is 0, times the derivative, again using the chain rule, times the derivative of the variable t with respect to t, plus the derivative of a constant, which is 0. Well, t to the first power is simply t, and dt dt, that is equal to 1. It's just like a fraction, the same numerator, same denominator, that's equal to 1, so we don't write it. And then here, 8, t to the 0 power is 1, so 8 times 1 is 8. And again, dt dt, that's equal to 1, so we don't write it. So that's why we sometimes get confused, because since we don't write it, and I want to finish the 8 here, there we go. Um, so since we don't write the dt dt, we don't realize it really needs to be there for full comprehension of what we're doing. But this is now the result of taking the derivative of x with respect to time, and that is the, what that, no, this is the derivative. That represents the slope of the function, or it represents us, it tells us how fast the variable x is changing when t changes. So when t is equal to 0, x changes by a factor of 8 for every change in t. When t is equal to 1, then it's 2 times 1 is 2, plus 8 is 10, so x changes by the amount of 10 when you have a change in t equal to 1. It's the ratio, this represents essentially the change in x divided by the change in t. So when we, cha when we change t by 1, so we go t plus 1, that gives us x plus 10. When t changes by 1, x changes by 10. So to illustrate that a little bit, let's go ahead and plug in some values for t equals 1 in the original function. When t equals 1, the function x becomes 1 squared plus 8 times 1 plus 10, which is 19. When we plug in t equals 1.1, we get 20.01. When we plug in t equals 1.01, we get 19.1001. When we plug in t equals 1.001, well, we get 19.01 and then some small decimal point far away. And so now what we're doing here is, let's say that we take the difference between these two values. We changed t by 0.1, and how much did x change? x changed from 19 to 20.01, so changed by 1.01 for a change of t of 0.1, so that ratio gives us 10.1. That's essentially the value of the derivative. That is the change in x with respect to time. It tells us how much x changes when t changes. And remember when we did this quick calculation here, we saw that it was about a 10 to 1 ratio. But that's because we used the actual derivative. Here we're using an algebraic approximation. So let's try to get it closer. Let's say that t is equal to 1.01, and then we put that in here for t squared, and for t, we end up with the function be equal to 19.1001. So it changed from 19 to 19.1001 when t changed from 1 to 1.01. So when we take that ratio, x changed by this much, t changed by this much, so that ratio gives us 10.01. That's essentially a close approximation to the derivative. How fast does x change when t changes, when t equals 1? If we even go further and we let t equals 1.001, so that's a very tiny change in t from 1 to 1.001, what is now the new value for x? Well, instead of 19, the new value for x is 19.01. .01.
So essentially, it's the change in x divided by the change in t, which is exactly 10. So the closer we get to a very tiny change in t, the more we can then approximate how much x changes when t changes. And that is what we're doing when we're taking the derivative with respect to a variable. It tells us how fast x is changing when t changes. And of course, instead of going through all this work algebraically, we can do it very quickly when we plug this in. When time is equal to 1, 2 times 1 plus 8, we know that x will change by 10 with an equivalent change of t. When t changes by 1, x will change by 2. So that's the ratio of the change in x when t changes. But what if we take the very same function, and now we're going to take the derivative of x with respect to a different variable, y? Well, we can do that. And so when we do that, we do the same thing. We say 2 times t to the first power, because we multiply 2, the exponent, times the number in front, which is 1. 2 times 1 is 2, times t to the 1 less from the exponent, which is to the first power. But now we have to use the chain rule and take the derivative of the variable t with respect to y. That gives us dt dy plus 1 times 8, which is 8, t to the 1 minus 1, which is t to the 0. Again, chain rule times the derivative of t with respect to y, which gives us dt dy. And then the derivative of a constant is equal to 0. Simplifying that, notice we get 2t. We don't have to write to the first power. But dt dy doesn't become 1 because that is not equal to 1. It's a change in t with respect to y plus 8 times t to the 0 power, which is 1, 8 times 1 is 8, times, again, this doesn't turn into 1 because that's dt dy, and of course we can leave off the 0. So instead of having this because we took the derivative with respect to time, now we get this because we took the derivative of x with respect to y. So what we're asking us now is this represents how much x changes with a small change in y. And so in that respect, since the function is not a function of the variable y, of course we can't solve for that, but it does show that when we say it with respect to, it really means that we're going to take it with respect to a particular variable. In this case, it with respect to t, which makes sense because the function was a function of the variable t, but we can take it with respect to another variable. And then, of course, if we're given this relationship, if someone later comes and says, oh, when, t changes, when y changes by this much, t changes by this much, then we could actually solve for that, for a particular value for t. And there are examples later on where we're going to actually do that. So it is a useful technique, and it does make sense under the right circumstances. But if you've ever wondered what we mean by taking derivative with respect to, well, here you have examples. We can take it with respect to t, with respect to y, with respect to z, with respect to x, with respect to a lot of other things. And so therefore, we need to know how to do it as well. And that is what we mean by taking derivative with respect to some variable.